We use the linear model for the case of a binary independent variable and there was no problem. We just transform the name of of one uh, value of the independent variable to zero and the other one to one and we've got a linear model, no problem. But what happens when we have more than two values in the independent variable? So here instead of having just one and b, we've got one, b and c. Can we do a linear model? Yes, we can as well. We need to do a trick. So let's recap. We've got these again as the, as the linear model and now it's clear why I was um, I insisted on using that model and not the traditional version of the model in previous cases. That's, we can see now that we change the model, we make it more complex, but that part of the model remains the same. So we need to change just the way we calculate gamma. So gamma now will be beta zero and then beta one plus beta one times xb and plus beta two times xc. So that's the trick. So we, we sort of divided the x variable into two, what we call dummy variables. So this is the trick. So we create a dummy variable called xb in which when the group is A, we assign the value 0. When the group is B, we assign the value 1. When group is C, we assign the value 0. And then we create a second dummy variable, xc, in which we assign 0 to A, 0 to B, and 1 to C. Okay, so that's basically the trick we need to do to use a linear model for this case. Now, this case is the typical situation in which we use one-way ANOVA. We've got more than two values of the a nominal independent variable. So, what is beta zero here? Beta zero is the mean of one of the groups. So there is one reference group in this case and we assign as reference group the group A. Again that's arbitrary. If you have A is a control group and B and C are different, uh, different experimental groups then this is an easy choice. You use the control group as the reference. But when there are no differences, the three groups are equally likely, or the three conditions you use, you don't have any, uh, any, uh, any difference between this, these three that uh, you know in advance, then you just choose arbitrarily one reference group. So beta zero would be the value of the mean of group A. So here is beta zero. Now beta one is the increase between the mean of group A and the mean of group B. Okay, so you can see that, um, let's say uh, the mean of group A is uh, 20, the mean of group B is 25 and the mean of group C is 10. Okay, so beta 0 is the mean of group A, so beta 0 is 20. And beta 1, it would be the increase between, in between A and B, so beta 1 is 5. And beta 2? Beta 2 is the increase between A and C. And in this case, it's a decrease. So it's, 10, it's minus 10. From 20 to 10 is minus 10. So when um, we... Let's calculate the, the gamma for group A. 
the gamma for group B and the gamma for group C. So for, for group A it will be 20 plus 5. Well, what's the what's the um, x the value of xb for group A? 0 is here. So 5 times 0. And and then what's the value of xc for group A? Is 0 is here. So we say times 0. So if we do 20 plus 5 times 0, which is 0, plus minus 10 times 0, which is also 0, that's 20. Okay, so gamma for A is 20. Gamma for B, well, we do 20 plus 5 times now xb what's the what's the value of xb for group b is 1 as we show here so 1 in there and then we do plus minus 10 times and what's the value of x the var variable xc for group b it's 0 is here so we've got 20 plus 5 times 1 is 5, 25, plus minus 10 times 0 is 0, so that's 0, uh, basically is 25. So gamma for group B is 25. And what about group C? What's the gamma for group C? Well, we use the same formula, 20 plus 5, which is beta 1, times and now we have to see the value for group C in variable dummy variable XB it's zero we've got it here so zero plus minus 10 I need to do this to avoid problems minus 10 times and what's the value of XC for group C it is one as shown here. So 1. Uh, what's the value of this? 20 plus 5 times 0 is 0, so 20 plus 0, plus minus 10 times 1. So minus 10 times 1 is minus 10. So 20 plus 0 minus 10 is 10. So we've got 10 over there. Okay, so that's the gamma, and that, so we get this value, but in order to um, make a prediction about uh, y, then gamma is the mean of a normal distribution. So, we have three normal distributions, one with mean in gamma 0, one on mean in gamma 1, and one with mean in in uh, gamma c, uh, gamma c. So I repeat, one with one normal distribution with mean in gamma a, one normal distribution with mean in gamma b, and one normal distribution with mean in gamma c. And there is some standard deviation in that distribution, and in this case is quite low because the values are quite close to the mean in each of the groups um, and uh, if the values are more dispersed then that mean that that sigma had to be um, a higher value and finally I, I uh, show you the the model the null model the null model says that there is no difference between groups so the beta 0 is the mean of the whole sample of, of the three groups, the mean, the total mean, and uh, the beta 1 will be 0, so we predict that there is no difference between the mean of group A and group B, and the beta 2 for the null model is 0, because we predict no difference between beta 0 and beta 2, so that's why I expressed in there. So, 
by using this creation of dummy variables, we can use a linear model for a one-way ANOVA. Now I'm going to show you an alternative to this. It's exactly the same, the same uh, result, but it may be useful for more complex models. So I'm going to show you that in the next video.